Hi everyone and welcome back to another episode of our Tech Talk series. My name is Anna and today Pascal and I are going to chat about testing trends in the automotive industry. Pascal, you are one of IPG Automotive's business development managers and I can't wait to hear what you're going to share with us today. Welcome. Hi and thanks a lot for having me. Let's dive right in. Tell us more about today's topic. Yeah, in today's session, we're going to have a look on how integrated chassis dynos or powertrain testbed are really a powerful solution to support full vehicle testing. Fantastic. Why is this topic gaining momentum nowadays? Yeah, powertrains in general, they are getting more and more connected to the full vehicle system and also to the surrounding environment. And therefore, it's very difficult and also time consuming to test these complex uh, vehicle systems under all possible conditions only by driving on real world roads. Um, all relevant features regarding safety, efficiency or comfort and the critical corner cases, they can be tested more efficiently in a controlled and adjustable environment. And another issue during development is that uh, it is very difficult to reproduce a driving situation where a possible fault gets detected or a set of undesired conditions occur. And therefore we have the vision to lock all relevant sensor data and in case really a fault um, gets detected to transfer it to the testbed and um, add variations as test cases. The virtual world clearly has many advantages for full vehicle testing, but what exactly are we trying to achieve? Obviously, testing on an integration testbed gives the engineer the opportunity to test and improve the overall system in a very convenient environment. Automation process can be applied and therefore efficiency increases. And we, together with our partners, um, we bring all the competences together which are needed to provide such a highly integrated testing solution. A vehicle on this kind of testbed, for example, um, needs all the input data um, for all relevant sensors, may it be a radar, ultrasonic, camera, leader or GNSS sensor. And for this, we at IPG Automotive provide a holistic approach for this kind of future testbed. Cooperation seems to be a key factor. What solutions does IPG Automotive contribute and where do IPG's partners come into play? We cover camera sensors with our video interface Box X or a monitor hill solution. And we are also able to bypass real um, radar, ultrasonic, leader and camera sensors and feed um, sensor um, data information from the virtual environment directly to the relevant ECUs. Beyond that, we developed and are still developing different solutions for radar target simulators together with Keysight, um, with the KIT or UNIXEC. And for the GNSS signal simulation, um, which gets presented in today's demo, uh, we teamed up with Spirant. And they can generate any GNSS signal, um, for example, a GPS signal on the testbed. And many um, energy management functions within the car rely on this information. And by connecting Spirant's hardware to our system, um, the generated GNSS signal um, matches to the location from the virtual driving environment. When we look at today's example, what challenges are we facing? So it's very difficult to bring all the um, individual competences together. And the vehicle needs the GNSS information for many functionalities. And it's uh, quite a challenge here um, to provide the um, location and time dependent GNSS signal and make the GPS available um, from any location um, at any time, no matter in the past or future. And furthermore, also a drop in signal quality, for example, when you're driving through a tunnel, needs to be simulated as well. So you can imagine many um, scenarios can occur. Many aspects need to be taken into account. Let's now have a look at your demo. In this demo, we are looking at the technical solution of GNSS proofing really as one part of an integration testbed. And today, obviously, we don't have a, a full vehicle or even a test bench here, but imagine you work on your specific indoor test bench where you have the full vehicle, the unit on the test, 
which is already prepared for testing at the test bench. And for example, if you would like now to improve and work on your energy management function, maybe on the African continent or in Finland during summer or winter time, obviously the car needs the corresponding location information. And for this, we um, are using here the Spirant hardware. It's a GSS 7000 together with the Spirant POSAP software. And we are coupling this um, to our real-time system, the XPEC4 Roadbox and our CarMaker software via UDP and TCP IP. And to prove um, where we are right now at which location and how we can spoof this uh, GPS information, um, I have here a standard navigation system and it shows that we are now recording this uh, Tech Talk episode at our headquarters here in Karlsruhe. Keep this location information in mind, it will be relevant at the end of this demonstration. And now, let's move on to the software part. So as you can see now, uh, I have here a standard CarMaker main GUI. And the scenario which we are using today are built using our scenario editor over here. Here, for example, we have used um, RSRP map data. And what's important for us that um, we have, let's say, the information for the starting coordinates and also the GPS information along the route and road. And with this information, the GPS position is then really calculated while the vehicle is driving. This test run here uses roads in and around Karlsruhe where we are located. And once we have really this test run with the road, the position information are sent then periodically to the POSEP software. Now I want to start this test run and with this, I want to switch over to the Spiron software. So the position information from CarMaker, so the three degrees of freedom and detailed the latitude, the longitude and the height are transferred to the software. And with this information, the Spiron tool can calculate the vehicle position and also knows, for example, which satellites are present which you can see over here at that time at this specific location. And this is also what you can see over here in the sky plot. For this reason also, the time needs then be synchronized between CarMaker and the Spirant tool so that the right GNSS signal is generated. You can see while the car is moving, we have here a constant speed of 80 kilometers per hour and this gets updated as well periodically. Let's move on again and uh, switch over to the screen. We added here also another um, small graphical user interface, which are specifically for the use at the test bench. And with this, um, the engineer who controls really the test bed from the control room sees whether the Spiron system is running and how many satellites are visible. This is necessary because typically the Spirant hardware is placed near the vehicle inside the testing cabin. And in addition to that, we are also, let's say, um, able to create a black hole kind of scenario where only a specific small number of satellites are visible. So some of the satellites are turned off and let's try this one. As you can see, no satellite is visible for the GNSS simulator. We can turn it on again. Obviously, this drop in signal quality can be then also automated and programmed so that this appears, for example, while driving through a tunnel. And finally, um, to make it even easier to understand, I want to switch over to my navigation system, which I showed you before. And on the screen of this navigation, you can see our location here in Karlsruhe. And just to show you how quickly we can switch from Karlsruhe to the Alps, I have to start just another test run. 
and using, let's say, positions that are coming now from a different part of the world. So stop this test run and open ones from the Stereo Pass from the Alps. And let's start that one. And once we start, you can see in the Google Earth visualization that we are now moving towards the Alps. And also the GPS signal of our navigation system changes. As you have seen, just by really changing the test run, you can simulate a different position in the lab or at the test bench in a very convenient environment. And of course, this GPS spoofing solution can be applied to your integration testbed for any kind of energy-related or others-related development. Those were some great insights. So today's demo focused only on the GNSS spoofing solution, which is just one part of the integration testbed. But when we look at the complete testbed, why, in your opinion, is this a relevant solution for future development? You're right. Um, all function-relevant sensor signals um, have to be provided to the vehicle on an integration testbed. Um, and within this solution, testing of more and more complex fun functions get to a level where it is feasible again. And it's really an efficient um, possibility to move test cases which have been carried out before on real roads um, to the testbed so that really issues can be solved in a well-defined and controllable environment. And the integration testbed is really an overall system approach um, to check functionalities which rely on cross-domain interactions. And in today's um, demo, I'd try to give you a few insights on just one example, but on a broader scale, um, we gained our fair share of experience working with partners and users over the past few years and are really eager to help you out. So if you are interested, um, contact us directly or keep an eye out for updates. We are really happy to support you. Thank you for sharing your expert knowledge on this up-to-date topic, Pascal. And thank you to our viewers for watching this episode. See you next time. Thank you very much and bye-bye.